if there's a plot gap, we'll just use hypnosis. There was some movie, Stir of Echoes, years ago with Kevin Bacon, a great movie. Somebody gets hypnotized, and all of a sudden now they're seeing dead people in the wall and murder scenes. It doesn't really happen that way. Right. You know, there's the movie Office Space. The guy gets hypnotized, the hypnotist dies while he's in hypnosis, and then he just doesn't give a hoot about his job anymore right. for the rest of the movie. And it's ridiculous. You know, there's so many misconceptions. Yet once in a blue moon, you'll actually see. I remember one time I was watching classic television because I had a show to do that afternoon, and there was an episode of um, of uh, Chips, and they're showing you how the Los Angeles uh, Highway Patrol uses hypnosis to bring people back to hit and run accidents. And of course, one of the characters walks in and disturbs the session, and they're just not close to the information. And it's like, get out of here! What you walk in here for? Well, all they have to do is put a sign on the door and do not disturb. You know. Right, right. But in the following uh, TV program that came on, it was Charlie's Angels, and somebody was being mind controlled through hypnosis. So you had one version of what's reality, and you have another version of fantasy. So, very quickly, just to wrap it up, because we're going to run out, run out of battery here in a second. Probably. I think that was the signal that we just heard. Yeah, plane um, flying by. Yeah, oh, no, the horn that just talked. But, um, so, any particular session that stands out after all, all of these years of doing it, I think we all, as practitioners of this really magical modality, um, you know, have... have something that stands out for us over maybe above and beyond all the others that we've done. Any Anything come to mind, a transformation, a rapid change that I know there are probably many of them as there are with well, all of us. Yeah, I, there's, there's a couple that you, I just brought a pediatric. I can, I've, I've done, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of private sessions, but I remember one little boy was traumatized by the World Trade Center collapse. The day that happened, they wheeled TVs into the room and kept showing the kids this horrible thing. So he kept waking up at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, bolt upright in the cold sweat, screaming. His mother was the last one to get back. His grandmother had been sick, and she was the last one to pick up her son from school. And he thought, what if she went to Manhattan and didn't tell me and the building fell on her? So I did a session with him, and he was clean of this. He just disappeared from it. And the following year, what does, the, what does the school do? They bring the TVs back in. And now he's flipping out again. So the father comes and calls me up again. So I do another session with the boy. And like many of our clients, you don't hear from him for a while. So I'm at a county fair about to do a stage show. And from over a hill with grass, there's a little boy running like this towards me. And, you know, I don't know how most other adults react, but I crouch down a little bit, you know, not even thinking. It's my subconscious reaction. And he jumps up in the air and grabs me around the neck and kisses the side of my face. He said, I'm all better now. I love you. You're the best the very best. And as I look over the hill beyond him, his father's coming, and I realize who his father is. He had grown a little bit, not much, but enough that I wasn't Im immediately able to realize who he was. And he said two sessions that he's been done with this. And plus, yeah, I told the principal, enough with traumatizing the kids. In the same span of time, I had a little girl who was moved around from one school to another and had been in a, a numerous amount of fist fights. She was in several grammar schools. And the mother calls me up, and I love how parents, and you'll get this, as a hypnotist, a fellow hypnotist, um, I did one session with her. She's 98% better. I don't know what that 2% was, and she brought it back, and now she's thriving. And she only threw two punches out of the normal 100. Yeah, out of the normal 100, I guess. Right, Still, right. But she cleaned up her entire life that way. Yeah, and I, it's it, amazing transformations in one or two sessions. I absolutely have seen. I actually had a, uh, a client, a kid, years ago who was, who was biting other kids in the private school that he went to, and it was so bad that they were thinking of kicking him out of his private school. I don't know if they could have done that in the public school, but he, he, was, a, he was a health risk to all the kids. And, uh, you know, I put him into a state of trance. He was actually six, the youngest that, that I typically go. I find that's the sort of the break point age where they can follow. I've worked with three-year-olds. I've never worked that young. But, Four-year-olds you know, have done that. But, you know, but, and you can, I know with puppets and things like that, whatever, but the, in this particular case, uh, this kid, um, you know, I had him, his, 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 his uh, thing in life was to, be one of the Power Rangers. That was his fantasy. So I used this whole Power Ranger, you know, uh, I, I, scenario. I could be Power Ranger, so could you. You know, that'd be good too. So you know, I remember I had him there. The, I had him there at the Council of Power Rangers meeting. Not that I knew much about Power Rangers, but they were they were looking for a new Power Ranger. But they only wanted kids who behaved well in school. That was the criteria. So I said, "You're at this. You're at this. Uh, this committee meeting of all the Power Rangers. There's the blue one, the green one, the yellow one, the pink one, the magenta one, the uh, the orange one. And and in the middle of hypnosis, just to, as an example of the awareness that you still have while you're in hypnosis, the kid said, 
there's no there's no orange there's no orange Power Ranger. He corrected me in the middle of the session. So, so he got the Orange Power Ranger. So, well, so we made him the Orange Power Ranger, Good. and he never bit another kid again. That was the interesting thing. His behavior really changed from that single. I think it was a single session. It's going back quite a few years. But what do you think? Uh, one more, one more closing question, then we'll, we'll wrap up. But you know, what do you think makes a good hypnotist good? What What do you think? is the defining set of qualities that a good hypnotist has to have. Well, I mean, it's the same as being a good martial artist or a great martial artist or anything else, a great race car driver or anything. You just stick with it and work no, as no, hard as you can. No, no, but it's more than that. But a, let me get to the next part of it. There's a passion to this. Right. I eat and breathe and sleep this stuff. Right. I mean, if I see people smoking on the street and I think I could talk to them, I'll go over and give them a card and say, look, you know, have you thought about getting this out of your life? Right. Um, there's a passion to this where besides the training, there's also thinking about how this stuff works and making it work. When well, you get in there and it's like, how do I improve this? That's where the speed trance came from. But but what are, but what are the qualities? I mean, so passion is clearly part of it. I think we who make a living doing this are deeply passionate about it. So I understand that. But what are the unique qualities? I mean, I, I'll, I'll throw out a few of the things that I think. You know, I don't mean to answer my own question, but just to guide this. So, you know, I think creativity is a very important part of it. You have, and you're creative. I think you have to be verbal. I think you have to be deeply empathetic to understand. The healing heart. You got to want to heal people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you want you want the best for other people. I like that. Yeah. You really want the best in other people's lives for that. And as you're pushing for the best in other people's lives, good things come to you as well. But that's not the motivation. The motivation is, you know, get out there and do the best you can to make it the best it can possibly be. Think about this, you know, the society we're in seems to be going the other way, where people are looking to grab and take and steal and whatever else they're doing, you know, and we need to turn that around. Yeah, and I, I think agree. each hypnotist has a unique position of being able to, either one at a time or in a group, pivot that. I agree 180 that. that back in the direction where it needs to be going, back towards the light, away That's, from the shadow. There is a macro societal benefit to this process that I think is unique because, you know, I think I think we're living in a very anxious age. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm 63 years of age, you're about yeah, but, five, but, 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 yeah, we're gonna, yeah, okay. But you're five or six years younger, right? And, we turn on it forever, yes. Okay. And, 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 you know, what I, what I see is that, you know, we have experienced in our lifetimes real profound changes, the equivalent of what Alvin Toffler wrote about in the 1960s or early 70s called Future Shock, I think we're seeing a cultural shock going on where people really can't keep up with these with these rapid fire changes that are going on in their lives. The, what I think is a, a fragmentation of, of focus and concentration. Um, we see, I'm sure you see as many as I do, people who are on all sorts of attention deficit medications and so on because their brains are split in so many different directions, cell phones, computer, whatever it might be, all a thousand channels on the uh, on their cable systems. So I think that we do have a really very, very significant role to play in calming the mind, focusing the mind, and giving people a feeling of well-being so they can be happier and we can have a less, you know, frenetic, less crazed uh, society. Um, so... You're back to a more loving, more gentle group of people. Yeah. Rather than the savagery I see even driving cars. Sure. Or uh, the stuff you see on the news. Yeah. I try not to watch too much local news because sometimes on the local news uh, there's too many murder stories and somebody got slashed and you know there's just more violence. That's what news is. It, it, I used to work in news. That's right. my, my business. One of the reasons I'm doing this interview is that I used to interview people in my previous career in television and, um, and yeah it's, I think we really have a very very important role to play to, to pacify the culture. We know how people feel so much better after being hypnotized. Uh, you've heard it as many times as I have. Uh, it's the most relaxed I've ever been. I noticed that after hypnosis, certain things are rolling off my back. I'm not as disturbed by them anymore. This is unique. It's all natural. It's all the individual just, you know, just learning how to use their mind in a new and creative way that was always there, but just undiscovered until you know, we came into their lives. So, right. so I'm going to wrap it up here. John, a fantastic interview, my friend. Let's say, Thank you, Bob. Say, say hello to the camera, goodbye to the camera. Thank you both. Thank you, everybody. And um, we'll see you in the next interview. Let's cut it. Right. I, know. I just wanted to sit for a second. You have, you have an edit point.
You understand the idea of an edit?